All right, so let's get to mixing the mortar. Mixing the mortar is actually pretty easy, and in order to help with that, we're actually going to use the instructions. The instructions are on the back of the bag, and according to them, I mean, first we want to clear the area of contaminants, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add water. And for this 50 pound bag, six quarts of water is required, but right here we have 20 pounds worth of mortar. So let's do some quick math, and we get around, around 2.5 quarts of water is what we're going to add. So what my dad likes to do is he likes to add half the water and then adds the, uh, the mortar slowly and then mixes it and then adds the water. But we're just going to follow the instructions. Actually, maybe just a tiny little bit, you know, just in case. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the mortar slowly because we don't want it to spill out. And then we're going to mix it to a smooth paste-like consistency. So you can do this two ways. You can either do it the manual way with like a trowel and then just, you know, just mix it. Or you can use a drill with a potato masher on the end of it. So just keep in mind that with the drill, you have to make sure it's really slow, like 100 to 200 RPMs. Actually, it doesn't say on the, the bag, but if you look online, like the product specifications, it says something like that. So what I'm going to do is add the mortar. All right, so like I said, a bit slow so that we don't spill it. You don't want to breathe that in. Right, so it's always a good idea to wear a mask. As you can see, there's a lot of particulates in the air, but I'm very good at holding my breath, which I should probably do right now. All right, now let's see how this mixing works. We don't wanna mix it too fast because then it's gonna spin out of the bucket. It's like a, um, what's it called? A mixer, a dough mixer. Especially when you're baking a cake, you want to make sure that you don't mix it too fast because all the egg whites and all the dough will just fly out of the bowl. It might be a good time to add some water. And we're going to mix this to a smooth paste-like consistency. So my dad's telling me you have to go all the way to the bottom, go, go all the sides, you might have to angle it just to get all that dust mixed in with the water. So, Alright, so according to the instructions, we have to let this mortar sit for 5 minutes before we can start working with it. By the way, after we're, we let it sit, we're allowed to work with it for around 4 hours before we have to throw away the rest of it. However, keep in mind that with a uh, quick setting uh, mortar, the ones that you just uh, let sit for six hours and then grout, you only have like about an hour of working with them. So just keep that in mind when you're working with different types of mortar. While we let this sit, we're gonna focus our attention to the tile cutter. So like I said earlier, my dad's teaching me how to use uh, different tools for cutting and laying tile. So this is one of the most important ones. So if you lay tile, this is probably a must have. And in the past, we bought many tile cutters and we actually ended up returning them because they, didn't, they weren't satisfactory. However, this one, we actually bought this for a bathroom job, is super cool. And it's very effective. And in the past, it's been uh, pretty, uh, pretty good. So we're not gonna show the uh, setup because that's quite a bit, but basically what, what's happening is that on the bottom of this, um, lever right here, you can see that there's a diamond tipped blade right here. It's kind of circular. And there's also this little um, swiveling thingy. And these two things are very important, especially with this lever in mind. So what we're going to do is demonstrate it. We have a random tile, like a throwaway tile we can use to demonstrate. And this right here is a stopper. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to lift the lever. We're going to put the tile up to the stopper and up to the edge. And what we're going to do is with that, with that diamond tip blade, we're going to score. We're going to score the tile. So first off, we have to make sure that it hits the tile. And then push across. And you can see that, or maybe you might not be able to see, but there's a score. It's, it's a very tiny line. What's happening now is that you'll see that when I let go of the lever, this little swiveling thing rests on the tile. So when I push down, you can see that it snaps perfectly. So let's see that. Look at how pretty perfect these edges are. Ooh, that's nice. Put that in an oddly satisfying compilation. But keep in mind that you don't always have to use uh, all these uh, precautions. You can always just mark a line and use that to cut it. Um, especially keep in mind that this is a cool tile color because it can cut up to 21 inch long tiles. And um, I think it was 3 8th three eighth inch thick tiles. In our case, I think we're pretty okay. That's that's more than enough for this kind of job. But like I said before, if you're t cutting or laying tile, this is definitely a must-have. All right, so that's pretty cool. Um, I could actually end up making a whole video about this tile cutter because it's so fascinating. I probably might end up making a video on it. So actually, yeah, we're probably gonna make a video on it. So go check that out. But for now, I think it's already been five minutes. So what we're gonna do is lay this aside. Today, I'm going to show you how to, or how I, lay a tile. So a few things that my dad picked up on. You want to hold your trowel about 45 degrees from the ground um, in order to help it out. They also have different size trowel teeth for different tile sizes. Like the, the twos might be longer or shorter depending on how thick your tile is.